Hello, good evening. It's six o'clock on Tuesday, the 6th of December. Bit of symmetry there. We're at St Mary's Halesworth. It's the lesser festival of Nicholas Santa Claus today. And uh, we're going to be mentioning him later on. If you are following in the book, Daily Prayer, Common Worship, Church of England, you might like to look up the 6th of December, half to two thirds of the way through to pick up those additional pieces of uh, prayer that we'll be referring to. Otherwise, it's evening prayer Advent in the book towards the beginning after prayer during the day. There are two sections of morning and evening prayer, ordinary time and the seasons, and we are at the beginning of the seasons section there. Online, Arima's Daily Prayer, the Church of England's website, and downloadable apps for Apple Android devices for the words. You're welcome to join me in the building, 8 and 6 every day. <coughs> Do check if you're coming from some distance, because every so often there's a change of plan. But uh, the Zoom codes, if you want to join by Zoom, are on the Blythe Church's website and Facebook page. And I'm live streaming on Facebook. It stays up as a video. And I'm recording the audio to upload onto my Dominic Doble YouTube channel presently. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Reveal among us the light of your presence, that we may behold your power and glory. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of light and darkness. To you be glory and praise forever. As evening falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence. May your word be a lantern to our feet and a light upon our path, that we may behold your coming among us. Strengthen us in our stumbling weakness and free our tongues to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The J. M. Neal Translation. Creator of the stars of night, thy people's everlasting light. O Jesus, you, saviour of us all, regard thy servants when they call. Thou grieving at the bitter cry of all creation, doomed to die, didst come to save a ruined race with healing gifts of heavenly grace. Thou camest bridegroom of the bride, as drew, drew the world to evening tide, proceeding from a virgin shrine, the Son of Man, yet Lord divine. At thy great name exalted now, all knees must bend, all hearts must bow, and things in heaven and earth shall own that thou art Lord and King alone. To thee, O Holy One, we pray, our judge in that tremendous day, preserve us while we dwell below from every onslaught of the foe. We'll praise eternal Son to thee, whose advent sets thy people free, whom with the Father we adore, and Spirit blessed forevermore. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. Scrolling on to the Psalms, you'll find them at the back of the book, the appointed psalmody this evening, numbers 11, 12 and 13. Psalms 11, 12 and 13. The Lord's throne is in heaven. In the Lord have I taken refuge how then can you say to me, flee like a bird to the hills? For see how the wicked bend the bow and fit their arrows to the string, to shoot from the shadows at the true of heart. When the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple, the Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold, his eyelids try every mortal being. The Lord tries the righteous as well as the wicked, but those who delight in violence, his soul abhors. Upon the wicked he shall rain coals of fire and burning sulphur. Scorching wind shall be their portion to drink, for the Lord is righteous, he loves righteous deeds, and those who are upright shall behold his face. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The Lord's throne is in heaven. You, O Lord, will watch over us. 
Help me, Lord, for no one godly is left. The faithful have vanished from the whole human race. They all speak falsely with their neighbour. They flatter with their lips, but speak from a double heart. Oh, that the Lord would cut off all flattering lips, and the tongue that speaks proud boasts. Those who say with our tongue will we prevail. Our lips we will use who is Lord over us. Because of the oppression of the needy and the groaning of the poor, I will rise up now, says the Lord, and set them in the safety that they long for. <clears throat> the words of the Lord are pure words, like silver refined in the furnace and purified seven times in the fire. You, O Lord, will watch over us and guard us from this generation for ever. The wicked strut on every side when what is vile is exalted by the whole human race. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. You, O Lord, will watch over us. I love the Lord, for he has heard the voice of my supplication. How long will you forget me, O Lord, for ever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long shall I have anguish in my soul and grief in my heart day after day? How long shall my enemy triumph over me? Look upon me and answer, O Lord my God. Lighten my eyes, lest I sleep in death. Lest my enemy say I have prevailed against him, and my foes rejoice that I have fallen. But I put my trust in your steadfast love. My heart will rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord, for he has dealt so bountifully with me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. I love the Lord, for he has heard the voice of my supplication. Scrolling through our first reading to a song of the Spirit, turning back in the book to Evening Prayer Advent for the Song of the Spirit. Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Behold, I am coming soon, says the Lord, and bringing my reward with me to give to everyone according to their deeds. <coughs> I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who do God's commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter into the city through the gates. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to you with this testimony for all the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David. I am the bright morning star. Come, say the Spirit and the Bride. Come, let each hear a reply. Come forward, you who are thirsty. Let those who desire take the water of life as a gift. To the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honour and glory and might for ever and ever. Amen. Surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. A reading from a homily of Gregory the Great. Our Lord said to his disciples, See, I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. There are many people, when put in positions of authority, who become hard and severe, relishing the chance to tear their subordinates to pieces and using their power to terrify and hurt those whom they are called to serve. There is no love in their hearts, because they always need to be in control. They forget that they are called to nurture their people as a parent. They exchange humility for pride in the positions they occupy, and though outwardly they may sometimes appear indulgent, inwardly they are full of anger. It is of them that in another place in the Gospels our Lord says, They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. My friends, we should remember that we are sent as lambs among wolves, and must therefore guard our innocence lest malice overtakes us. Those who undertake any pastoral office should never be the cause of evil, and should actually be prepared to have to endure it. By gentleness they must soften the anger of the violent. Wounded ourselves by ill-treatment, we can bring healing to other sinners. If on a particular occasion a zeal for justice requires a display of severity, then let severity have its source in love and not brutality. In this way, authority is demonstrated outwardly and inwardly. We experience a true parental love for those in our care. This is what our blessed master was teaching us when he himself demonstrated that his was no selfish love, being unconcerned with worldly honour or ambition. Our Lord continues, taking either personal bag for the journey nor sandals and greet no one along the way. We should have such confidence in God that though we have no material security, we will never lack the necessities of life. Such confidence obviates the necess necessity of spending time in the pursuit of temporal goods when we should be securing eternal goods for others. We have no leisure for idle conversation in our calling, rather we must hurry along the path of preaching. That was offered from Kindle Edition celebrating saints in relation to it being Santa Claus Day today. Isaiah 30 from 19 is our Bible reading. Isaiah, major prophet, opens the prophecy section of the Hebrew Scriptures. If you've got a Bible with both covenants in it, 
you open it about halfway through and move towards the back, once you get through the wisdom literature of the Psalms, the Proverbs and the like, you should come across Isaiah. Do use an index if it doesn't fall open for you. We're looking for the large number 30, chapter 30, and we're starting at verse 19 and going to the end. Isaiah chapter 30 from 19 is also available online, just scrolling back a little from the canticle we read a moment ago. Truly, O people in Zion, inhabitants of Jerusalem, you shall weep no more. He will surely be gracious to you at the sound of your cry. When he hears it, he will answer you. Though the Lord may give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet your teacher will not hide himself any more. But your eyes it shall see your teacher. And when you turn to the right or when you turn to the left, your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, This is the way, walk in it. Then you will defile your silver-covered idols and your gold-plated images. You will scatter them like filthy rags and you will say to them, Away with you. He will give rain for the seed with which you sow the ground, and grain, the produce of the ground, which will be rich and plenteous. On that day your cattle will graze in broad pastures, and the oxen and donkeys the till ground will eat silage, which has been winnowed with shovel and fork. <clears throat> on every lofty mountain and every high hill there will be brooks running with water, on a day of the great slaughter when the towers fall. Moreover, the light of the moon will be like the light of the sun, and the light of the sun will be sevenfold, like the light of seven days on the day when the Lord binds up the injuries of his people and heals the wounds inflicted by his blow. See, the name of the Lord comes from far away, burning with his anger and in thick rising smoke. His lips are full of indignation, and his tongue is like a devouring fire. His breath is like an overflowing stream that reaches up to the neck to sift the nations with the sieve of destruction and to place on the jaws of the people's pride, a bridle rather, that leads them astray. You shall have a song that is in the night when the holy festival is kept, glad as of heart as when one sets out to the sound of the flute to go to the mountain of the Lord, to the rock of Israel. And the Lord will cause his majestic voice to be heard, and the descending blow of his arm to be seen in furious anger and a flame of devouring fire, with a cloud burst and tempest and hailstones. The Assyrian will be terror-stricken at the voice of the Lord, when he strikes with his rod, and every stroke of the staff of punishment that the Lord lays on him will be to the sound of timbrels and lyres, battling with brandished arm, he will fight with them, with him, for his burning place has long been prepared truly it is made ready for the king its pie made deep and wide with fire and wood in abundance and the breath of the lord like a stream of sulphur kindles it <clears throat> so i looked up the other day just to make sure that um I didn't have to just rely on the text to interpret which bit of the Isaiah book we are in. And we are in the middle of the bit that was written whilst they were in exile. So this is to encourage God's people not to um, become assimilated within the peoples amongst whom they live. And to look with hope for their redemption, their rescue, their restoration. So they are weeping because they're away from home. Think of um, people who are exiled from Palestine or uh, exiled from Ukraine. Uh, Rohingya people, you shall weep no more. We are told that um, whilst the Lord gives bread of adversity and water of affliction, your teacher will not hide himself any more, but will guide you with a word. You will hear his words, and then you will throw away your silver-covered idols, your gold-plated images. And at that time, God will give rain that their agriculture will prosper. Babylonians who've exiled them rely on the river just as uh, the Egyptians rely on their river. So there's the food baskets in the Middle East. But um, Jerusalem, prior to irrigation, Israel relies on a good relationship with God, that they care for their environment, that the rains come at the right time. And so uh, rain and uh, light from the sun, from the moon, are a sign of God's provision. And as with, is often the case in the scripture, it's also a metaphor. So we can see where we're going when we are in the light. Um, the rain is like the spirit brings forth, clen it cleanses, but it's also um, in its moistening, nurtures and uh, brings forth life from the ground. Uh, in our hearts, the Holy Spirit is the rain. And then we have um, in amongst the prose, a bit of poetry related God's anger, fire. And this is one of the features of those things that describe God. <clears throat> fire, water, wind can be destructive. A rock can be destructive, but also um, have positives. So they can build up, they can provide warmth and light, uh, sustenance and the like. And so we then move on to talking about the rock. Going up into the mountain of God, the rock of Israel. 
God's people have a song as in the night when a holy festival is kept. And it's a rather disturbing image that they will be beating out the sounds of their song of joy whilst uh, the Assyrian king and the Assyrians will be beaten by the rod of God. Um, and I guess if they'd been oppressed, then they would revel and uh, be joyful at the sound of the beating that their oppressors receive. But it's a challenging read, <coughs> as uh, we think of perhaps images or stories we've heard of colonialists and other powers torturing and destroying and making people kill and maim even members of their own family to uh, oppress them, to brutalise them. Thinking of some of the atrocities in some of those uh, African nations as tribes against each, fighting against and uh, killing each other. So there's nothing new under the sun. But the story for us, I guess, that uh, disturbing imagery aside, is that if we are oppressed, if we are exiled, then God will come and restore us to the land we know and love and will help us once again to make it a productive area of life. So if we've left a relationship, or relationship has been shut doors to a relationship or a job, or a house has been closed on us, that story suggests that we should have hope that the door will once again be opened and God will install us and be with us and will um, deal rightly with those that have been the cause of our isolation, our exile, our exclusion, our homelessness, our joblessness. To Matthew 14 then, our second reading. <clears throat> Matthew is the first of the Gospels in the Second Covenant, so if you're following in the Bible and you're in Isaiah at the moment, move towards the back of the book. When you're about two-thirds of the way through, your, the minor prophet will come to an end and the Gospel of Matthew will open the Second Covenant. We're looking for the large number 14 at the head of the paragraph, chapter 14, and the small numbers in the text 13 onwards. <clears throat> You'll find it online if you scroll on past the reading we had uh, earlier, the canticle we had earlier. Now, when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot with the town, from the towns. When he went to shore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured the sick. Sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the village and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. He said, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowd to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves, gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boats and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowd, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but by this time the boat battered by the waves was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning he came walking towards them on the lake. But when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. They cried out in fear, but immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and started walking on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to them, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret. After the people of that place recognised him, they sent word throughout the region, and brought all who were sick to him, and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak, and all who touched it were healed. Not sure what Jesus heard. I'm just looking back to see what we had yesterday. John the Baptist. So Jesus hears that John the Baptist had had his head cut off. And so he goes off on his own to pray, remembering John the Baptist was Jesus' cousin. He goes off in a boat. Interesting, um, he's on his own in the boat. We tend to think of him as being looked after by those who were fishers and who did fishing. And <coughs> I guess. If he's in a boat on his own, he knows how to deal with a boat too. The crowds follow. He goes ashore. And although he's grieving for his cousin, I guess challenged himself about what might become of him. 
he cures their sick, having compassion on them. And then the disciples come to Jesus to say, send the crowds away. And Jesus said, they do not go away, you give them something to eat. And this is one of those stories that may well actually be, if you like, a historically factual account. But it's arguable that its fuller value actually would be to treat it as a metaphor that we as God's followers might want to just send people away. We don't actually have, say, a church fund to help people who are poor. So let's send them to somewhere else. But Jesus says, you have enough. What you have is enough. And uh, what we have is the mass, the breaking of bread. What we have is the word of God. Yes, we can help and support as far as we are able, but we're not actually set out to help people with money, directly with food or with clothing, with accommodation or with warmth in our medieval buildings, which uh, we can use for worship in. But we are able to work with others. But our temptation is to say, go away. But Jesus said, feed them with what you have. We can care, we can listen, we can talk, we can share worship. And uh, we're told that there were 5,000. We're told that 12 baskets were filled. There are 12 tribes. There are 12 apostles. We're told that they were five loaves. Is that the um, Torah? Two fish. Is that the two covenants or is that the prophets and the law? One way or another, there is feeding in the food and in the teaching and in the word. I was struck in the following paragraph or two, the word immediately pops up. So immediately he makes the disciples get into a boat and go on ahead, but they have a tough time. He walks out on the water to them. <clears throat> and again, this might be a factually accurate account, but it is also arguably more easy to comprehend if we think of it in terms of a way of talking in a piece of text that is written by and for persecuted people, that they don't want to say Jesus is God, but for Jewish people who know their Psalms, God makes a way in the sea. How do boats work? The Broadly speaking, the Hebrew people aren't a seafaring nation, and the seas are where devils are. How do people get from A to B? You know, God does it. God makes a way in the sea. God can control the elements, <laughs> the wind, the waves, and uh, Jesus is demonstrated walking on top of all that. Because under the soles of his feet, he is above it. They think he is a ghost. That gives them such fear. Then Peter says, if it's you, call me out. And uh, Jesus does. But uh, Peter is lost in that idea that there is the world. There is so much world going on that even with Jesus standing, even with Jesus instructing him, he begins to sink. Just as, I guess, handing out the loaves and the fish, the disciples amongst themselves would have floundered and, and uh, lost out and dropped out, even with Jesus standing there and telling them what to do. So it's the same with us. It's an encouragement, I guess, in our weakness, in our lack of ability to help and assist, to actually listen to God, do what God says, and do it and get on with it. <clears throat> that word immediately, again, ringing in our ears. Then the next thing we know, they're in a foreign land. So they've been troubled trying to help and support their own people, and it's only going to get worse, out of the frying pan into the fire. And uh, it's all very well whilst uh, the foreigners are engaging with Jesus, but he's going to move them on <coughs> and get them involved themselves. They uh, send word, all who are sick are brought to him, begged him that they might touch his clothing, and all who touched his cloak even were healed. It's easier, isn't it, to think that uh, God will sort people out away from us on his own, but actually, the earlier passages, the feeding of 5,000, the walking on water, we have to believe and respond immediately to what God has in store for us. To the response we back in evening prayer, uh, Advent, my soul is waiting for you, O Lord, in your word is my hope. My soul is waiting for you, O Lord, in your word is my hope. There is forgiveness with you so that you shall be feared. In your word is my hope. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. My soul is waiting for you, O Lord, in your word is my hope. The Song of Mary. Well done, good and faithful servant, you have been faithful over a little, I will make you ruler over much. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, my spirit rejoices in God, my saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him, from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, 
and have scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones, and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children for ever. <clears throat> Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will make you ruler over much. <clears throat> Father, Son, Spirit, one in three, three in one. We look back over the past day, those moments where we have touched your cloak, where we've been healed and restored, assisted in the challenges that the day has uh, thrown up, where you have provided, where you have rescued. We thank you for all those memories and experiences. If that hasn't been our experience today, we come to you at the end of the day, uh, calling out to you, if it is you, call out to us. <clears throat> and uh, we pray that you will make your cloak available and that we will be prepared to receive from you, through your disciples perhaps, that which we require to nurture, sustain and support us, even in our isolation, even away from home, that we may not be hungry. We thank you for your provision. From Release International, we pray for Inya, who is aged 21, came to Christ six years ago and was rejected by her family in Nepal. She suffered intense emotional abuse before leaving home. Release International Associate Ministries have supported her schooling. <coughs> we thank God for that. From Christian Aid, we join Christian Aid colleagues and supporters. And uh, tomorrow morning, there is going to be a virtual prayer breakfast. <coughs> So this evening's prayer is to encourage us to pray tomorrow. So we thank God for all of putting that together and that it will be an encouragement to people who do join in. The Joint Public Issues team have written a prayer for the Ukraine. God of all, with alarm and concern, we bring before you the military intervention in Ukraine. In a world you made for peace and flourishing, we lament the use of armed force. Suffolk Diocese prayers for this evening. Invited to pray for the Brett Valley Benefits and their lead clergy, Elka, and there is a reader, Teresa. Pray for House of Duty permission to officiate. Uh, also, any other readers or priests. We pray for their elders. We pray for their treasurers, wardens, secretaries in the parishes. And we ask that you bless and encourage them with the, the power of, in the power of your spirit to trust and obey. For there is no other way, as the famous hymn goes, as they are called and directed to serve, to travel, to feed and care. We pray for the St Nicholas Hospice on St Nicholas Day in Bury St Edmunds and their chaplain Sharon. We pray a blessing on all who are dying, who they care for and their families and other wider circumstance in that place. Pray for all their um, trustees, for their fundraisers and for their chaplain as Sharon supports the dying and those that care for them. Pray too for Rural Dean Odes or Odaki, who is in Bushangaro Parish in Kagera, Alink Diocese. He uh, know your spirit and strength to preach and speak and live as he will in that place that your rule may be established. We pray today for the people and businesses around Halesworth, associated with the addresses of Halesworth Road, Walpole Road, Bramfield Road, London Road, Wissett Road, Norwich Road, Key Street and Holton Road. We pray for the people living there for whom things are difficult at the moment, that they will be humble to receive help offered and uh, persistent to find that which they need. Where things are going well for people may be removed to feel charitably towards their neighbours and to uh, make good use of what they have currently. May they turn to you with thanksgiving as those without turn to you for help. And we pray for the businesses based in or serving those addresses, likewise, that they will make the right decisions in relation to goods, jobs and services that they provide, that they maintain their market, know what to invest in, in terms of research and development and marketing, know how to set their um, wage levels and uh, their prices, that they may continue to be able to serve this community. Uh, 
And we pray for Peter, Liz, Ron and Jean, Emily, Sam, Becky, Helen, Pedro, Joan, Daniel, Linda, Ginny, Peter, Sally, Gemma, Catherine and others we may know for whom life at the moment is a more than average challenge. We pray for those that care for them, be they family, friends, neighbours, volunteers, organisations, individuals. We pray that they might have the support they need in their turn. We thank you for all that's good in the lives of Jean, Peter, Mary, Emma, Vera, Tony, Jim, Len, Anne, John, Dolly, Joan, and others who've recently died, especially John, who laid to rest today. Those who have uh, died suddenly and unprepared as a result of accident, neglect, those who have taken their own lives, those who died suddenly through sickness. We remember those who have served you faithfully here, those we've known and loved and seen no longer. As we remember Nicholas, we give thanks for all whose ears mine falls at this time. <coughs> May he pray for us and enable us to be charitable, quietly so, doing our bit to stand against the sex trade. He famously put a dowry, dowries through chimneys so that three women avoided life of prostitution as they were able to marry. Pray that we as church may do our bit standing for justice and uh, supporting those who are abused and uh, in and getting into the sex trade. And we pray for organisations seeking to stand in the way of organised crime that is so often behind that injustice. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. We pray for ourselves and all who mourn. The loss of a loved one or a change in life chances. We pray that you will be for us the way, the truth and the life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Almighty Father, lover of souls, who chose your servant Nicholas to be a bishop in the church, that he might give freely out of the treasures of your grace, make us mindful of the needs of others, and as we have received, so teach us also to give. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Awaiting his coming in glory as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, <clears throat> now and forever. Amen. May the Lord, when he comes, find us watching and waiting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodbye to those joining us on YouTube.